Welcome to the beginner section. We are going to build on the accelerator program that we did earlier or that short quick quick start guide if you will, right? We're going to build on a lot of those elements. I'm going to show you a lot more new features in this beginner section. Before we begin, we need to load up our data set. So again, there's two methods. We can drag and drop or I'm going to do drag and drop on this one. I'm feeling lazy. All right. So we do drag and drop and it's going to read our information. And what I'm going to show you in this particular uh, lesson is this. What is the, the data interpreter? What are these things, which we covered on a little bit previously? I'm going to show you how to rename your labels. I'm going to show you uh, what this thing does. I'm going to show you what the connection type does and the filtering. So still a few things I'm going to leave out because we still don't need to go through them. Right. So let's begin with the data interpreter here on the left side. Right. What the data interpreter does, and I wish Tableau changed the name for this. It's kind of, it sounds fancier than what it actually is. Right. If you look at our data set, right, with the headings, you can see that it's recognized the headings. Right. And the reason it's recognized the headings is because in the Excel file, it's the first row of data. Okay. So let's go ahead and close this and I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's not. So let's go ahead and open the sample superstore and I'm going to create a few rows just at the top and I'm going to put just something in there. Let's just say one, right? So um, Tableau needs to find this, but when it reads it for the first time, it's going to think that, if I go to the left here, it's going to think that this row is the field headings and this is just another record or another entry, which isn't correct. Okay, so I'll show you how to deal with that. So if we go ahead and close this, let's open up Tableau again. We're going to load that same data in and it should come up with these arbitrary field headings that don't mean anything. So let's go ahead and close that. Let's load up the Superstore again. All right, and as you can see, we now have all these weird headings. Okay, our actual headings are these ones here. Okay, but it doesn't seem to recognize it because we haven't put that as the first row. So in those cases, you can use the data interpreter. So if I click that, it's going to try and recognize what the correct row is for the field headings, as you can see. Okay, and that's cleaned it up. So pretty useful. However, I actually don't advise that you use this. Because what you're doing is you're assuming that Tableau is smart enough to always be able to do this. And because there's so many varieties in our information and what's actually on the top of those Excel spreadsheets, you may not always be guaranteed that it's going to do it correctly. And also, I want people to be able to, uh, to use the best practices, right? To learn to do best practices. That means every time you're going to load up information into Tableau, always make the first row the heading, no matter what you do. Try and avoid using data interpreter. Always keep those first rows as your headings, okay? And hiding the rows doesn't count. You have to delete them. It has to be row one. So that's what data interpreter does, okay? The next thing we're going to do is look at this connection. Now, this connection doesn't really come into play until you start having larger data sets. And when I mean large, I'm talking about when you try and create a bar chart and then it it starts thinking, it starts taking a while because there's too much data. And when I'm talking about too much data, I'm talking maybe around, like let's say you had 20 or 30 rows, I'd say 100,000, 500,000. You know, when you start to get up to your millions, uh, hundreds of millions easily, right? When you get to larger data sets and you start feeling that performance issue, then you want to switch this to extract. Now, I'll explain the difference. Right. Let's get my drawing tool out. Actually, let's minimize everything and let's get this tool. Let's just get rid of that. All right. If I have information, let's say it's a really big data set. Let's say it's in a server. Okay. We've got a massive server and it's got 1 million records. Okay. 1 million rows. And I'm feeding this into Tableau. Okay. Every time I run something in Tableau, every time I drop a, um, a, a tile or, um, you know, every time I try and do a graphic, it has to pull from the server and send that back and forth. So you're, you're constantly sending transactions back and forth from this system to this system. And that takes quite a, a bit of computing power, 
right? So what Tableau can do is when you go to an extract, it almost takes, I don't know the exact explanation for this, uh, so don't crucify me, but it takes almost like a snapshot of this information and converts it into like a, a Tableau type of um, static, oh, how do I say? It's like a static file for Tableau to read, okay? It creates an extract and it puts it right here. So you no longer have to have this feedback. It actually exists in ta within Tableau, okay? So it'll create an extract file and your performance will multiply by a factor of, I don't know, 100 or something, really efficient because suddenly it's all in the same environment. You're not querying anymore, okay? So I'll show you how to do that. For most of your work, if it's quite small, we're talking 1,000 rows, 10,000, you probably don't need extracts. When you start doing uh, combining multiple data sets, maybe you'll start doing extracts, but you can always switch back and forth. So I'll show you how to do the extract one. Let's say I want to make this an extract. I just click extract. It's going to go, all right, we're ready to go extract. And then to activate it, all you have to do is click on a sheet, right? Get out of data source because it doesn't want to run it straight away if you're still doing some other stuff. If I'm still going to change data types, I want to rename things. It doesn't want to do it straight away. So once you've done that and you go, I'm happy, then go into sheet one and you're going to get this dialog box. And it's going to say, where do you want to save this extract? And the extract is going to be a hyper file, right? That is Tableau proprietary technology, I believe, and it helps the system run really fast. So if I go ahead and save that, it's going to compile that information Right, it takes a few seconds, so you just got to be patient, right? And there you go. So this is now an extract, okay? And if I ever wanted to change it back, I just right-click here on my data set that I've connected to, okay? I go edit data source, and if I go back to live, it switches back to a live connection. So I can always go back and forth. And this is especially useful if you accidentally deleted your extract file. Just create a new one. No big deal. Okay? The next thing we're going to look at is the filters. If I click on add, right, and then add again, it lets me filter my information before I've even done any analysis. And this is very useful because let's say I'm doing an analysis and it's quite a large file. <coughs> And I want it to be pretty quick. I don't need all the extra information. I want to filter out all the stuff I don't need. Let's say I'm only interested in United Kingdom office supplies. That's really all I'm analyzing. I don't need everything else. I can click on this filter button. Right? I can go add. And let's look for, actually, I'm just going to move this because I've already forgotten. Right? I'm going to go add. I'm going to look for these two things. So start with category. Right? And we go OK. It's going to open up the filter box and I only want office supplies. Okay, so I go okay, that's added office supplies in here and I'm going to add another one. So we go add, let's go to country, okay, and we're only interested in United Kingdom. So I can scroll down and look for it or I can type it in here, tick it like that and go okay. So those are the things I want to do. So it keeps office supplies and when I go okay, it's going to show me just those things I've filtered. So if you have a look here, we've got category. They're all going to say office supplies, right? And these are all going to say United Kingdom. So the information I'm going to be handling moving forward is going to be a lot less. There's less I have to deal with. And it makes things a little bit easier, right? Let's look at a few other things. Here for the rows, this is just your preview. Because if your sample size is... Oh, if your data set is like 100 million rows, if it had to actually show it here, it would use up a lot of computing power. You don't want that. So it just shows you a preview. So you can set this to be, I only want to see the first 500 or the first 200 rows. And it's really just to show you, okay, this is what the data looks like. This is what's in here in case you want to have a look, right? That's all it shows you, all right? These buttons here, I'll show you quickly. This lets you sort your information, all right? So if I go... Let's just go here. Sort the fields from A to Z. These fields are now A to Z. And it's a great way for having a look inside your information. Or you want to go ascending per table. Right? So you can have a play with this. I usually just keep it on data source order because 
when I look at the raw data and I look at this information, I can have a look and go, okay, it's loaded correctly. I can see the information. I loaded the correct file in. That's usually the problem um, if, I, if they don't match, right? And sometimes as well, because there's so many columns, I want to see it in a little bit easier. So I can click on this button right here, and that just puts it in a list for me, and I can kind of go up and down, right? The last thing I want to show you is the data types. You don't have to do this part here, but you can if you want. This tells Tableau what kind of data you've loaded up. So it's either a number, actually I'll put it into this one. So it's either a number, as you can see, it's got the hash here, right? You've got words, so that's put in as a string, right? You've got cities. So if you use the word city or country or postcode or anything like that, it will automatically try and detect if uh, the geographical location. And the reason for this is to map any position on the planet, you need longitude and latitude. And this will automatically find it for you. Okay, so we'll get to that when we get to that. But that's a very useful feature. You've got dates here. If you see a little clock in there, it's date and time, right? You got the rest of them in here. I don't think I have a date and time data set, right? You can also sort within each one of these. So if I click that, I can sort highest to lowest. So just having a look in my data set, right? I can also rename this. So let's say I don't want to call it sales. Let's say I want to call total revenue. For example, I can do that. If that's not what I wanted, I can undo right up here. So I just press undo, right? I can go backwards and forwards. And that's pretty much your data preparation. Um, anything more extensive than that, then yeah, you can use software like Tableau Prep. If you need even more than that, there are other softwares, but it all depends on what you're trying to achieve. All right, so I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you at the next video.